I have resurrected my old Dell laptop so that Froggy can live again. You see the little controller here for the direction Froggy's going to go. Nice RS-232 serial port connected to Froggy. BB's on the ground ready for Froggy to pick up. So let's just tell Froggy to move forward. Froggy, stick your tongue out. Now pick up some BBs. Oh, just a couple. Better back up. Now turn to the right. Go forward and pick up that BB. Tongue back in. Good job, Froggy. I'm soon going to dissect Froggy's brain, but before I did that, I wanted to just take a video showing how different parts of him worked. Froggy's power comes from four one and a half volt cells, and the cells themselves drive the two motors this motor for the one wheel, and this motor here for the other wheel. The third wheel is just a caster that's not powered here. Um, there's a 5 volt voltage regulator here that actually provides the power for all of the TTL components. Um, so the brain, if you want to call it that, is composed of several different pieces. Uh, here's a diagram showing how most of them are connected together. Um, I guess the first thing is this uh, baud rate generator that has a little crystal in it and you can set the switches to determine what the baud rate is that the um, serial port is going to use to communicate with the computer so that is actually uh, right here there's the crystal and there's the switches for setting the baud rate um, the second component is this piece right here this is a uh, driver uh, driver receiver that um, converts the plus or minus 12 volt which is standard for the um, RS-232 serial connection into uh, 5 volts which is what's needed to drive the TTLs in the um, other parts of the system and that you can see right here and here's two little LEDs the LEDs turn green when the system is actually receiving. It's a uh, receiver and also a driver. I'm only using the receiver half for it, um, although the driver half works. But since Froggy only receives instructions and doesn't send any, that's the only part that's actually hooked up. The main part of it is this UART, the uh, Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter, which is this part right in here. This is the part that takes the clock signal in and then uses that to synchronize the 5 volt um, signal that's coming from the computer uh, and then it uh, counts the peaks and figures out what the actual bits are of the um, data that's being received through the serial port. And so there are output lines here um, that do that. So that's this part of the circuit over here. The UART has some switches here that you can use for setting things like parity and stop bits. The other thing that's on this board are two um, NOT chips, multiple NOT gate chips that um, serve two purposes. One is they uh, invert the output of the UART um, so that they are, when the UART goes high, they are actually sinking current and um, 
the other consequence of that is that they're able to um, to sink enough current to drive the transistors that are in the last part of the system. So in the last part of the system, there is a board here that has some uh, PNP transistors. Those PNP transistors are turned on by the NOT gates and when the PNP transistors turn on they are able to um, drive the coils of the um, the things that actually the um, relays that actually uh, turn on the motors and control the movement of the robot. There's also some diodes so that when the fields collapse on the relays they don't burn up the transistors. The LEDs on the board with the relays um, basically tell you which ones have been activated because when the NOT gates go low in addition to pulling current from the collector of the PNP diode of uh, transistors it also um, pulls current down through the LEDs so you can see which ones are operating. Basically each of these LEDs here represents one of the output bits from the UART so that's the ones place, twos place, four place, eighth place, and sixteen place. And so the way that the uh, robot is actually turned on is by mapping those different bits to different functions. So here's the five output bits from the UART and you can see the first bit controls the direction of the white right wheel, the fours place bit contro controls the direction of the left wheel, and then the twos place bit turns the wheel power on and off. Um, the eights place bit and the sixteenths place bit control the tongue with uh, the sixteen place bit turns the power for the tongue on and off and the eights place uh, controls the direction. Because the relays are double throw, double pull, you can use them to reverse direction of the current flow in addition to um, turning them on and off. Um, I forgot to point out that Froggy's tongue is actually a drawer from an old CD player from the era when CD players actually had motors in them. And here's the little magnet that we used to pick up the BBs. So now let's watch Froggy actually do something. In order to make Froggy move forward, I want to have the left and right wheels both set for zero for forward, and the wheel power is going to go on. So that means the twos bit is going to be turned on, which means we should see the second LED light up. The other thing we should notice is that the receiving LED on the uh, that tells us that a signal is being received through the RS-232 port should turn from red to green. So I'll just go to my little controller here, put it on forward, and then send. Now if I want him to go backwards, the two wheels should be set to one for reverse power on, that would be sending a 7. The first three lights should be turned on. So let's go to backwards, click go. And that's pretty much how it works. Watch how the first two LEDs on the top get energized when I tell it to stick out the tongue.